Hey guys, how you doing? Uh, I've had a request for a video on the Cochrane Gambit. Um, and I have to confess, I wasn't really sure if, I'd have, if this is something I'd ever looked at. So I looked at my Lee Chess studies and I did have it down as a kind of an anti-Petrov. Um, but I only had like one line, a couple of branches off it. Uh, so I've, I've done a little bit more work on it. And this doesn't really apply to me because I'm currently playing the Danish after E4, E5. Now it is an E4, E5, but this occurs after the Petrov, okay? So um, I've got a study here. Now I've just started to flesh out like seven of the most common lines. And this is really the way that I'm going at the moment. As an intermediate player, if it's not your job to, to get chess right, you know, you're not going to remember a heap of theory about a relatively, um, you know, non standard, non mainline uh, response such as the, the Petrov. Now, it is relatively popular, the, and the Petrov is gaining in popularity, not least because a lot of people want to play the Stafford Gambit. Thank you, Mr. Rosen, for that. Um, and it, interestingly, it, it does actually score quite well all the way through. However, so, do you want a weapon against the Petrov? Okay, so let's start. So I'm going to show you actually the third most common line. Okay, so what is the Petrov? Well, it's e4, e5. So you've got the white pieces. You play knight to f3, and your opponent plays the Petrov, which is um, the, or also known as the Russian game with knight to f6, okay? And this is a really weird kind of opening. And there is the opportunity to take the pawn, and we'll look at that. Um, well, I mean, we, basically we do go and take the pawn, but you can end up in a position where both knights take both pawns and it all gets a bit weird. But I'll show you that one at the end, okay? So the, uh, the Cochrane Gambit proceeds with knight takes e5. It's undefended, okay? And now, if I look at, so basically, all, this is all based on black playing the most common moves, right? So the most common move played here, sometimes they'll play knight c6, and we'll look at that. That is the Stafford Gambit. So they've given up this pawn, they're trying to trick you, okay? The most common move is, is pawn to d6. And now, um, the computer says you should retreat the knight, okay? But that's very boring. So what we're going to do, and, and retreating the knight scores 49% at the settings I've got, which is 2,000, 2,200, 2,500 um, blitz and longer on Lee Chess. So we're talking intermediate and advanced, right? Um, at this level, knight takes f7 actually scores 51%. The computer hates it. Computer says you've, you've given away any advantage already. However, let me show you a cool kind of trap. So um, the king has to take the knight because basically you're forking queen and rook. There's nothing for it the king has to take. There's, that's the, the only move, all right? And now um, what we're going to do is we are going to occupy the center. But oh no, oh no, you say, oh no, my pawn. Now, there are three main responses, maybe, yeah, four... Four main responses here, okay? Um, and what you want is you want black to take the pawn, okay? If black takes the pawn, so right now black is minus one, so black is a pawn up and it suddenly drops to plus 1.7. So that's almost three points difference, three pawns difference. That is a blunder from black. And let me show you how it goes now, okay? Now, obviously the king is way offside already, so you continue with queen h7, uh, h5 check. Uh, there's a couple of things that they can do. Uh, g6 is fine, also king e7. King e7, um, I don't have, I don't think I have that line done right yet, but uh, king e7 is the second most popular move, but almost twice as commonly you'll see pawn to g6. And now you go queen d5 and we have ourselves a fork on the king and the knight. Okay, let's say the king goes to there, it's the most common move. You grab the knight, and basically we are, what, we're one pawn up, but black's king is already in a heap of trouble over there. 
Um, and that's basically the end of that line and white is just doing significantly better. Okay, let's look at a couple of variations, right? So e4, e5, knight f3, knight f6, Petrov's defense. We take the kick with d4, the most common move. We take now. So they take here, right? We play d4. Now there's a couple of ways they may decline. They've got c5 is actually the most common. And we're in this one, we're going to look at bishop to e7. So bishop to e7, uh, if they don't take here, okay? And it's, again, the engine favors black. You push bishop d3, so we're defending this pawn. And we're also preparing to castle kingside if we want. Most common move is, yep, yeah, rook f8. Um, the most common move here from, from white is to castle. That scores 50%, but e5 is really challenging. Computer doesn't approve. D takes e5. Okay, D takes e5. And then we're attacking the knight. So where's this knight going to go, right? Can't go there because it gets took. Can't go there because it gets took. Can't go there because it gets took, right? So where's this knight going to go? Is he going to retreat all the way to the back rank? Is he going to retreat here and block in this bishop? No. The, um, the most common move actually is knight to g4. Here, oh no, he, he can go there because it's defended by the bishop, of course. That's the most common, oh, it's only been played four times, right? Knight to d5 has been played three times, and again, it's a complete blunder. Can you see why it's a complete blunder? Right? It's the same move, queen h5 check. Now the king can't retreat here, so he could go into the corner, but if he goes into a corner, look, our bishop's out here. A bit like the Charlick, right? Bishop's out here, it's checkmate. Well, it's not immediately, you'll have to come back, but it's uh, absolute curtains. So the most common move, most likely move, is actually king to e6. Then we can grab this pawn. And again, we are, I mean, materially, we've traded a knight now for three pawns, but we have all the activity, all the development, all the king safety. Um, we can carry on developing, and white is simply much better. So this is this is my point, I think... You should look at a few kind of typical lines rather than trying to, to memorize branch off the branch off all the way to twigs and leaves, right? Okay, let's look at another alternative. We've got seven of these to go through. E4, E5, knight F3, knight F6, the Petrov. We take the pawn. They try and kick the knight. We capture here. Okay. They take the knight. They have to take the knight. Then we push d4, trying to tempt this knight to capture here. In which case, you know what to do. Right, now what if they push c5? This is actually the most common move by Petrov players, at least at the intermediate to advanced level. I would imagine, actually, that at lower levels, this approach could be even more effective. Okay, so now, simply knight to c3. Just develop here, right? They take. Now we give check with the bishop, okay? So although our knight is under attack, black doesn't have time to capture that knight, right? We could simply take the pawn, but let's get a bishop out first with tempo, right? They will block with their bishop nearly all the time. You trade. The king now can't retreat or anything. The king is now sucked further into the board. So king takes e6, and now queen into the middle of the board. And look at this position. This is just... This is just gorgeous, right? We're actually, um, we've captured two pawns for the sake of a knight, but having your opponent's king in the middle of the board and practically no development is just fantastic. Let's just follow through a few more most likely moves. Knight c6, right? They develop with tempo on our queen. They're attacking our queen. Just slide across the c4. King runs away. Bishop comes out. And now look, we're preparing to long castle. I really like the positions that white is getting here but it really does kind of depend on just throwing everything at your opponent rook comes to c8 white's now plus 2.5 we're totally winning long castles look we've got a rook on a semi-open file lined up with king and queen we're threatening like to capture here but where the bishop may be right king runs away to c7 check with the knight king runs away to b8 Knight takes d6. We're threatening now to capture the rook. We're threatening a fork here. We're threatening a discovery on the queen. And these are all the most common moves played by black, right? 
they take, we take with the rook. Okay, now, this is important, instructive position uh, idea here. Very tempting to take with the bishop, but then the king moves away. King moves out of check, right? You take with the rook, we are doing a few horrible things here. This is really unspeakable, right? We're attacking the queen. The queen can't take the rook because it's defended by the bishop, but as soon as the queen moves anywhere, we can, for example, capture a knight with a discovered check. It's far, far more poisonous move than capturing with the bishop. Okay, now, we're going to look at black's best response here. So e4, e5, knight f3, knight f6, the Petrov. We capture the pawn. They kick us. We capture there. King takes. All right. So now we push d4. Oh, no, my pawn, you say to yourself, right? Now, this is the engine's recommendation um, for, for black. In the real world, white still wins 50% against 45%. You develop your knight. King moves away, right? This is all the most common moves. Um, bishop c4 is the most common here, but um, I'm thinking bishop e3. And this is all just based off you know, research from the database of games that have actually been played. Black will develop a knight. You lift your queen, right? So now we've got a threat of this. Coming in here, disrupting the king. They will do that. You Long castle. Uh, white is here just slightly better, but I would take white's position here any day. We've got all this control over the center. Um, in terms of material, again, we, we've got all of our pawns. Black is down two pawns. We've just sacrificed a knight for that. And we've got Freddy, Gary, and Harry ready to shoot up the board and cause a lot of problems. Now, for the Stafford fans among you, what do we do if we take the knight and they go, oh, brilliant, we've got a Stafford, right? Knight c6. Now, what you don't do, no, 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 you do not take the knight, right? That's exactly what they want. They want you to take the knight. Here's what the uh, real world uh, what works best in the real world. Pawn to d4, right? Most likely thing is that they will take this pawn here. You block with your queen. White is plus two already at this point, okay? If they do that, d5, it's the most common move, okay? You take their knight now, they take back, and now pawn to f3 because this knight is pinned, is pup up a pinned on the cookie king. Right, they might block, they lose their knight, you're plus 4.6, right? What's not to like? That is how to avoid the Stafford and circumvent it entirely. Here's another couple of things that you might see. Okay, knight f3, knight f6, the uh, Petrov, we take the pawn, and they completely decline it entirely with queen e7. Now, simply d4, okay? Always looking to get in d4. Yes, this, this pawn is hanging right? Um, but that's not the most common move. They're most likely to play d6, in which case just retreat the knight. We are slightly better at this point. If the knight takes here, that's absolutely fine. Block with the bishop, push on c4, and castles, okay? White is here plus 1.4. This bishop isn't about to get out into the board anytime soon, which means this king is not going to be castling in the next three moves. Yeah. And um, white does have, you have to say white is better at this point. Um, and no material has been, has been traded other than that's it. That's it. A couple of pawns. We've lost a pawn each. That's it. All right, guys. So just the one uh, remaining variation to look at and this is the knight takes e4 line that i've subtitled everyone dies which is a bit of a spoiler alert but so we play our knight out they play their knight out the petrov we take and they take and now there's i mean there are a few things that you could do you could play d4 here d4 kind of does does all right the computer rates queen e2 most and then they will follow suit you take and now they hit your knight and most people here play d4. I think f4 is, is slightly better. We're not defending the knight, but we're just planning to recapture. They will take and we recapture with the pawn, and white here wins 52% of the time. So they hit the pawn, 
we defend with the deep horn, they take, we take, the knight comes out, our knight comes out. Okay? Queen takes, we take, they take, we come in here, threatening c7. Right? Now what can they do about this? There's not much. If they move the king, they can lose castling rights. So, what you most likely to see is bishop d6, and then we take, and they take. Now, it's all quite even. But if you look at the imbalances that there are on the board, okay, um, we have a bishop pair, whereas they have a knight and a bishop. And the board is wide open, which favours bishops, right? We're going to have options of castling either way. Uh, they are not going to be able to castle that way for sure. Um, what's more, they've got the, the three pawn islands as well. So we've got a three and a two. They've got a two, two and a solo in the middle of the board. So bring out your bishop here. We're just getting ready to castle long and hit this pawn straight away. They castle, we castle, and white is plus 1.2. So it's all pretty, uh, pretty dull. We're already kind of in an ending after only a few moves, but that's the way it goes. So... There you go. There's the um, so that that's called the uh, the the Kolmov gambit apparently. But that's your kind of quick introduction to the the Cochrane gambit. Nice trap if you go down the most. Uh, well, it's not the most common route, but uh, you might get it sometimes. So I hope that's that's useful for people who face the Petrov and have been looking for something a little bit spicy um, as a weapon against it. I would be very comfortable playing this myself, although right now I'm not playing the King's Knight opening with Knight of three on move two. But uh, if at any point I do, hope I'll remember this stuff. Right, everyone, thanks for watching. I'll see you later.